from the inn, welcome one, welcome all. Pull up a chair by the hearth. It is time to begin the Asia Pacific Winter Championship, where eight players from Asia have gathered here in Hollywood, California to battle out for one spot in the Hearthstone World Championship and their stake in $100,000 prize pool. My name is Dan Ferdinand Cho, and this weekend I am joined by Brian, Brian Kibler Kibler. How are you doing, Brian? We're back again for another week of Winter Championships. Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm really excited to see uh, how this lineup here, uh, the Asia Pacific Championship, does. Uh, we had a couple of great events the past couple of weeks, but uh, the Asia Pacific region put up an incredible result at the World Championship last year, so it'll be exciting to see uh, how things turn out this weekend. Absolutely. We've seen people here in the Americas. We've seen the Europe's. Uh, however, we haven't seen the Asian players be able to go at it just yet. So I'm excited to see what decks they bring, who's going to be the one becoming the champion, again, getting that spot in the Hearthstone World Championships. Now, we do want to recognize that we have an opportunity to reveal another Whispers of the Old Gods card, but not yet. It's going to be throughout this weekend. I know a lot of people have been excited because today we got to see Nazoth and a few of those cards. Brian, Kira, really quickly, uh, just a quick thought about what you think about those card reveals today. Oh, I mean, Nazoth looks super cool. Uh, I'm really excited to see what the other Old Gods do. Definitely the kind of thing you can build a whole deck around. So yeah. really excited to see. Certainly going to be a lot of fun. Now, Kibler's not the only person joining me this weekend here in the tavern. TJ is over at the sidebar with a couple of new faces here as well. Thank you very much, Dan and Brian. And once again, welcome everybody back to the sidebar, where throughout the weekend we'll be breaking down some of the action and diving in some of, into some of the complexities of competitive Hearthstone. Joining me on the desk for the first match is going to be D2 and Papa Smithy. D2, how are you doing, man? Excited to be here? I'm super excited to be here, TJ. I mean, this is going to be so amazing to see these matches go on and be able to commentate on them. Remember, at the BlizzCon Championships last year, we were one Control Warrior versus Rogue away from having all four APAC players get to get out of their groups, basically. So this is definitely a strong region, and I'm really interested to see who's going to be coming out on top. And Papa Smithy, glad to be here, too, as well. Yeah, returning to APAC. I was there last year to see that crop of APAC players. Now I want to see who's going to make it through here and who's going to qualify for BlizzCon. Pimping Ho returning. Excited to see him. Three Korean players. A lot of hype on my side. Yeah, definitely a strong region historically. So I'm really excited to uh, see this weekend's matches. But let's take a look at the schedule for today. We're going to start off in the first half of the day with the Group A matches, where we'll see Handsome Guy take on Staz and UCCU take on Dahuni. Then we're gonna head over to Group B for the second half of the day. We'll see Naviut versus Matsun and Sugi versus Pin Ping Ho. How the group stages will work is we've split the eight players into two groups of four. The groups will play out in double elimination fashion. And at the end of day number two, we'll be left with four players, the top two from each group, who will move on to a single elimination playoff stage. Well, they will compete for that slice of the $100,000 prize pool and also that coveted spot at the Hearthstone World Championship at BlizzCon. To give you guys a deeper look into the Hearthstone Championship Tour and to also give you guys some insight onto how these players got here, we do have Doa standing by Fireside. Doa, how's it going over there? Hey man, it's going awesome. Welcome to the Fireside, guys. This is where the interviews are gonna happen. This is where the games are gonna happen. But before we get there, let's step back a second. We're going beyond Americas. We're gonna go beyond Europe. It's time to go to the Asia Pacific region, but let's find out how these players got here. Well, seven of our eight players got their spots through regional qualifiers with the final player earning a spot through his overall Asia Pacific ranking. There's definitely gonna be a lot to talk about. So if you wanna get in on the conversation, go to facebook.com forward slash Hearthstone or tweet us at Play Hearthstone with the hashtag HCT. So now let's give you something to talk about. Let's see what Handsome Guy and Stas had to say about facing each other in game one. So my first match will be against Handsome Guy. I don't know much about him. 그래도 상대가 누구든 뭐 이길 생각으로 왔고 저는 스타즈 선수보다 훨씬 더 많은 게임을 했었을 거기 때문에 더 많이 어려운 상황과 더 다양한 상황에 대해서 이미 다 경험을 해봤고 스타즈 선수는 저를 이길 수 없을 거라 생각합니다. Actually, I admit that my decks are not strong, but they're consistent. I think it's just 50-50. I don't know much about other players yet. That's why uh, I designed my decks to be prepared in every situation. It would help me a lot to stay calm, even though there's so much at stake. Uh, just pray that uh, they don't draw too good. I'm not good at mental health. I'm not good at other players. I'm not good at 
좀 정말 좀 심각하다고 생각할 때는 제 뺨을 때려서 좀 정신을 차리도록 만드는 편이에요. 저는 아무한테도 안질 거예요. <웃음> 好，我们来看一下这个比赛。我们来看一下这个比赛。我们来看一下这个比赛。我们来看一下这个比赛。我们来看一下这个比赛。我们来看一下这个比赛。我们来看一下这个比赛。我们来看一下这个比赛。我们
Yep. Uh, it could be a, a mid-range or controlling build. We'll have to see what the mulligans show us. Yeah, it also could be slightly more border, like board aggression where you're playing Flame Imp into Knife Juggler. Yeah, there it is. Uh, and we do see some of those cards. Now, on paper, it feels like this matchup still does favor the Freeze Mage uh, by a considerable margin. However, um, do, do you feel like anything has changed in recent times because of the innovation within Freeze Mage itself? Well, the, the classic Freeze Mage, I think, is a little bit less favored than the Torch Mage against Zoo, simply because it has less overall burn. So it can't quite burn them out naturally quite as easily as the Torch Mage deck can. Mm. Uh, one of the most important cards for the Zoo decks to look for is Iron Beak Owl, mm. uh, simply because Iron Beak Owl allows the Zoo deck to be able to neutralize a Doomsayer, which can otherwise completely destroy their board. And I think if you're Staz and you see your opponent ban your Druid, mm -hmm. based off the lineup with Warrior and and the Mage, I think you can anticipate your opponent most likely playing Freeze Mage. It's still game number one, but yes. you still have to make these assumptions like, can I get away with pushing away these cards, pushing, pulling for these mulligans? So I really like that you pointed that out there. Handsome Guy already introduced with an interesting um, crossroads here. Does he want to use the coin on turn one? Uh, and if so, what is he going to use it on? I think if he chooses the coin, he would coin out the Mad Scientist. He does not choose to, however. He does have the Emperor Tharson in his hand, and Emperor Tharson is an extremely powerful card to uh, deploy with the coin early to reduce the cost of your hand. It is true, and I think because he realizes Void Voidwalker is not the most threatening card out there, Kibler. It's, it's a 1-3 compared to Flame Imp, which is often, you know, can do 9 damage if it goes unanswered on turn 1. The Voidwalker also makes the... Uh, Mad Scientist less effective as a tool to control Staz's board because if he did play something like a Knife Juggler on the second turn, mm -hmm. uh, he wouldn't be able to use the Mad Scientist immediately to remove it. Yep, makes sense. So now that uh, Handsome Guy has slowed down the pace a little bit here, he can still develop minions off the curve, still play the Mad Scientist, still play Loot Hoarder, and we do like the Mad Scientist because, you know, when you draw cards with the secrets in hand, it makes it much weaker for Mad Scientist to pull them out of the deck and then thin your deck. Therefore, usually we lean towards a Scientist. Uh, however, Handsome Guy is once again going to weigh his options here because his hand is still looking a little bit awkward, still wants to have some of those other plays, um, primarily to answer the board here. He does have a couple of options here. He could potentially, I actually like this play for him with the Ice Block rather than Mad Scientist. It uses his mana quite efficiently. He could potentially play the second Scientist, which would guarantee him a nice barrier, rather than the okay. possibility of playing the Mad Scientist, getting Ice Block off of it, and then end up with that second Ice Block stranded in his hand. Yeah, that's completely fair as well, being mana efficient. One of the more important concepts in Hearthstone. Handsome Guy picks up a Frost Nova, a pretty powerful card against Zoo, which normally leverages all of the strength on the board in order to win the game. However, Staz does run cards like Doom Guard, which even though you might think that is very common, we've seen more Zoo decks here in the championships that have been running Leroy Jenkins and then cancel Meccano instead of the Doom Guards. Yeah, Doom Guard has kind of fallen out of favor uh, since the introduction of, of Dark Peddler, simply because the ability to generate additional copies of Power Overwhelming for burst damage from hand combos much more effectively with Leroy Jenkins than it does with Doom Guard. Well, Staz has several options here. Um, depends on how he wants to pressure the board, but he has a lot of burst in the hand. I don't know if he wants to just throw Doom Guard on curve because it feels like you give up a lot. You, you have Power Overwhelming and Abuse of Sergeant in the hand. Uh, however, I think he is also being aware, you know, this is also coming up on turn five. What am I going to do? I have to be really wary about things like Frost Nova Doomsayer. Going into your opponent's uh, five mana turn is not really when you usually want to add a ton more to the board because there is that threat of Frost Nova Doomsayer. And, and Staz does just push to the face with all of his minions. And he's debating playing the second Imp Kang boss. I, I think he's, he's likely going to play it. Uh, he does have a pretty strong possible follow-up if the board does get cleared, and he's already got a handsome guy down to 16 health. It is worth evaluating whether or not even worrying about the uh, Frost Nova and Doomsayer is something you can afford to do. Yeah. Sometimes this matchup is so poor for the Warlock that it's like, you know what, I have to play as if that card doesn't exist and just be as aggressive as possible. Uh, in many cases, because this is a disadvantaged matchup, you need to take risks. You need to try to push for damage where you can get it and not really try to uh, play as conservatively as you might in, in a matchup where you're advantaged. That's a, a general concept that's uh, pretty important for Hearthstone competitive play in general. Mm -hmm. Usually, the, the bigger an advantage you have, the safer you can play. While if you are at a deficit, it's important to take risks that may be able to give you a chance to win a tough matchup. Yeah, in some cases your opponent doesn't have the ability to freeze the board and then all of a sudden you overwhelm them. 
Um, sometimes they draw, you know, all four secrets and they can't do anything else. In this scenario, Emperor Thorson reduces some pretty decent cards. Uh, Hamson guy having cheaper freeze, even cheaper Alex draws that could be pretty powerful. So Staz certainly not going to let Emperor Thorson live, but it's all about how he wants to distribute his mana this turn. Chooses to life tap, and I was anticipating using the abusive sergeant, but perhaps he's going to use implosion instead. Yeah, implosion doesn't have many great opportunities uh, in this matchup, generally speaking, and getting an opportunity to use Use implosion for value. Uh, I think is a is a pretty good, uh, pretty good turn here from Staz. Yeah, so the, certainly. The ice barrier from Hansel guys broken. He's still at 19 health overall. Uh, he did just pick up a flame strike. He has a lot of tools in hand to really delay this game. He, there, he, I can actually imagine the possibility of even using his hero power on one of these uh, imp gang bosses and then playing the Frost Nova to totally lock Staz out of being able to deploy anything this turn. Oh, that would be very creative, because then the only way they can add burst is through Power of the Whelmings. There would be three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage on board. That is pretty, that's interesting. Certainly an interesting play, and Handsome Guy is probably thinking about exactly that. Do I want to be really mindful of this? One thing that's important in this matchup, though, uh, is because the Warlock deals so much damage to themselves via Life Tap and Flame Imp, sometimes you can actually assemble enough damage in hand uh, through using your hero power in your opponent's face to actually just burn them out without the, the use of Alexstrasza. Handsome Guy doesn't have very much actual burn in his hand, though, so I expect him to take a more defensive approach. I mean, maybe maybe you're right though, because if he flame strikes next turn, then the following turn he can Alex Straws that he does have seven damage with the Frost Bolt Ice Lance. I mean, it's not if he just picks up a Fireball, he might be able to set up a three-turn win condition. Yeah, though Staz did just pick up probably the most important card oh. he could with that Lothab. Lothab can potentially allow him to protect this board. Uh, and right now, Handsome Guy will have no play he can actually make next turn if the Lotheb so comes down. In many cases, the... players will want to save Lotheb in order to, to prevent uh, a burst damage turn, but I think that in many cases, it's better used, especially in this kind of situation with a very heavily developed board, uh, in order to simply prevent your opponent from dealing with you actually have to play. I agree. Not to mention that your opponent will be on seven mana. He already did use one of his Frost Novas that was reduced, so it's a very low chance that he can use another Frost Nova, for example, and stall the board. Yeah, not only is he, has he cut off the possibility of Frost Nova, unless it was reduced by Emperor, but he's also playing it into a turn where even with the cost reduction, Handsome Guy isn't able to use his mana to play Alexstrasza. If, yeah. he'd, if he'd held on to that Lotheb, Handsome Guy could have possibly used his, his Alexstrasza to effectively use the Lotheb turn, but now he's really in a position where he doesn't have any good plays this turn. Well, uh... Maybe he feels like he can draw first the Acolyte, see if it changes anything. Uh, he also can stall uh, with the Ice Lance or Frostbolt to see if he can not take too much damage. I think he's really concerned about getting his Ice Block popped. Right now, there is, it looks like 12, 13, 14 damage on Staz's side. Right. So, which is easily mitigated if you can trade in one of the tokens and then play like a Doom Guard and yeah. add more damage. Or even just use a Power Overwhelming. Yep, that's also a possibility too. Having damage from the hand is really important also as a Freeze Mage. Uh, Doom Guard feels like a way to gain health against your opponent. Yeah, Doom Sphere does prevent uh, Staz from very likely be able to both break the Ice Block and clear the Doomsayer. So if Staz kind of has to choose which one he wants to go with this turn, he does have the ability to break the Ice Block with the Power Overwhelming in his hand. He has eight, uh, 12, 13, 14 on board, and the Power Overwhelming in his hand that gives him, well, actually, is it actually one off? <laughs> actually 12, 16, no, 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 no. He's yeah, he eight, has 18 yeah, damage. He has 18 total. damage. So he actually right. is one off. Because he can't. Because Handsome Guy's actually at, a, at at 19 total. He can't kill off his uh, minion. You know, the fact right. that he traded his accolade was, yeah, a, it was huge actually deal. a That was actually a big deal. Because yeah. of because of the fact that Handsome Guy traded in his uh, his accolade of pain, it prevents him from having any minions with power on the board for Staz to trade into and actually generate additional bursts. So this is. This is super close thanks to that. Yeah, and you know, because of it, maybe Staz was hoping that, uh, you know, now that in hindsight, he hopes that his implosion doesn't take up so much board space. Because yeah. he would love to just throw down a Doom Guard or something to, to get that extra damage. Yeah, there are some, some of those unusual spots where you end up being like, oh, I, I didn't really want four. Yeah. 
Implosion working the opposite way. Now Handsome Guy has an opportunity to develop Alex Straza if he wants to go aggressive. He has 10 damage of burn in his hand. It's not exactly guaranteed. He also can go for a defensive play of blizzarding with a secret or a mad scientist, setting up for an opportunity to stall out the board for a better flame strike and take it a little bit slower. Yeah, he's got to be a little bit worried because Staz does have a really, really big hand. And without the ability to close out the game with Alex Straza next turn, uh, he could potentially just be setting himself up to just die in two turns. So it looks like he's calculating things here. He does have the Blizzard hovered over. He is going to go ahead, it looks like, and freeze the board. Play Barrier. So Barrier is the uh, the best way for him to prevent his Ice Block from being broken this turn, even if Staz is able to uh, do quite a bit of, uh, of damage from hand. Right now, he has at most nine from hand. Either Gormok plus Doomguard or Doomguard plus double abusive is nine total. Mm -hmm. And with that ice barrier, Handsome Guy has effectively 16 health. Staz figuring out if there's a, a way he can just make best use of his hand. I don't know if he needs to even life tap to anymore, to be honest. He has so much in, in his hand going for him. Yeah, generally speaking, when you're playing against a control deck as an aggressive Warlock deck, you want to life total or life tap pretty liberally, but against Freeze Mage, you do need to worry about their ability to just burst you out with damage from their hand without even needing to use Alexstrasza. I wonder. However, Staz still feels like, like, I, I don't know how much pressure he feels uh, from at 24, but I do know that he does have like some of his highest cards, highest cost cards in his hand. So I do like the idea of playing at least one dude on his turn. And, oh, this card's the second Doom Guard. That's actually a pretty big hit because he now no longer has the ability to burst additional damage from his hand. All of his damage that he has available now comes from the board, which can potentially get frozen. Yeah. The second Ice Block is a very strong drive from Handsome Guy because it will potentially allow him to continue this window that he has uh, to find that additional burn he'd need to win post Alexstrasza. Yeah, that's uh, completely true. And now Handsome Guy, once again, presented with the question, do you want to play Alex Straza aggressively or do you want to play defensively? The thing about Flame Strike is that you are at seven and you should be able to make it only six damage. On He's going to use the Frost Bolt. All right, well, this, this does mitigate pretty much all of Staz's offense at the moment. Uh, thanks to the fact that he did discard that Doom Guard, he no mm -hmm. longer can threaten to break, break block. Ooh, but that is, again, one off the ability to break block. Do you go for it? I don't really see a power overwhelming plus abusive sergeant to put the the uh, the block down to one, or rather put handsome guy down to one with his block to be terribly appealing this turn. You can still do the same play next turn uh, with uh, perhaps the void walker in play or off of one of the eggs. If your opponent is going to remove your uh, your board, you still have those those eggs to uh, attack into them with with the buffs. Yep, it makes sense too, given that. If you go all in and your opponent, uh, you can't pop the ice block, and then all of a sudden you used your burst to control against Alex Strasser, for example, you might be in trouble. So we'll see uh, how Stash chooses to play it. In fact, he can play pretty much every minion in his hand. He's seen Flame Strike, he's seen Blizzard, he's seen Frost Novas. I'm feeling pretty comfortable if I'm Stas to just load up everything here. Yep. So he does he does play the abusive, holds onto the power overwhelming. Which makes sense. There's no reason not to really play the abusive, but handsome guy picks up a blood mage Thalnos. And looks like he's choosing to Alexstrasza on himself, which, given the fact that he's used much of his burn as removal, makes a lot of sense. Now he's just able to play a controlling, defensive-oriented game uh, and potentially even just get hits in with his aiding. Although uh, I'm, I'm really wondering what Staz has beyond just the Doom Guards. Does he have any of the other stuff that we've seen, like the Sea Giants, or if he has any other secret cards up his sleeve for the zoo? Uh, you know, the, the Implosion and Defender of Argus, those are ways that can, can help control his Alex Straza from impacting him. Yep. Staz does trade in one first in case he gets four on this Implosion. That rolls a three. Pretty convenient, I think. Yeah, but this is works out fine. He uh, is able to develop a bit of a board and continue pressuring Handsome Guy. Uh, Frost Nova, not really what Handsome Guy's looking for. Yeah. It does buy him some time, but he doesn't really have much to do with that time right now. Oh, that's a really good point. Now that he's played so defensively with Alex Straza, he's not on a draw to win at all. 
And with this Frost Nova, it just stalls, but he needs a little to dig a little bit deeper. He, he's probably going to be anticipating cards like Antonidas to help give him the final burns. Uh, in fact, Antonidas with Frost Nova is almost a checkmate against the zoo that has such a small weak board uh, with a lot of minion count. Yeah, the, the Nerubian eggs are actually giving Staz uh, a pretty significant threat out of this board mm. thanks to the 4-4 the that was able to be generated from that power overwhelming an egg. And despite having mostly small minions, they're able to attack for pretty significant chunks of Handsome Guy's uh, life each turn. Runs out on me. If Handsome Guy's going to continue his line, he can play really defensively with the Forgotten Torch, shoot down the spider, or whatever that creature is. The Rubians are spiders, right? They look spider-ish, at least. Yeah, the limbs. He's going to pay his own Blood Mage Thalnos. Running close to the rope here. He's that just going to go with the Nova. All right. So now he's lost the ability to get spell damage uh, bonus from Thalnos, but did pick up a Fireball. He's still very, very low in terms of the ability to actually deal damage from hand. He's expended his, his only freeze in hand as well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not in love with the play. I can see what handsome guy's trying to do. I think he's trying to dig really deep for some kind of finisher, pyroblast, uh, Antonidas. Uh, Staz in the meantime picks up, well, something. I, I guess one one is better than zero zero. I'm actually a, a little surprised to see Staz tap here, because he has he's already seen the uh, he's already seen the Alexstrasza, and he's just kind of putting himself in the burn range. But he has a a threatening board, and there. The Antonitis off the top of the deck for Handsome Guy. There you go. That, if he plays Antonitis with a Forgotten Torch to the face, he generates a Fireball. That leaves him with two Fireballs in hand and the ability to potentially draw into a Frost Bolt or uh, another Forgotten Torch. The Roaring for, Torch. Or the, or the Roaring Torch. Well, right. he actually, he wouldn't have the mana to actually, he would have to be Frost Bolt exactly in order for him to present lethal the following turn. Uh, however, I believe he used both Frost Bolts. Did from the game, uh, if I if I keep track correctly, I think in the very beginning stages he did. You're right. He did. He, he did use one very early on, and then of course he used one uh, on the Doom Guard. So uh -huh. this Ice Lance has less use of it. And some guys gonna try to stall on the board and say, hopefully you can't kill Antonitis. There is five power onto the board if Handsome Guy chooses to kill off this Void Walker as well. And I, I don't mind also getting to work on the minion, uh, on the life count as well. You want to have a lot of damage to be able to push through. You're still missing a little bit of peace. Well, it's important that the uh, the Mad Scientist also potentially represents damage that can go to the face, too. Oh, that's right. That's the, 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 if the Mad Scientist, if there aren't any taunts, we do see that Staz does have that Defender Vargas, but he does need to, to stop that damage that can potentially actually just attack him as well. Mm -hmm. You know, Staz... So I feel like he has yet to hit a lot of these other cards similar to Flame Imp and Haunted Creeper. He, mm. we, he, we didn't see in the very early stages of the game, so Life Tap almost feels like a death sentence given that your opponent has acquired another Fireball, and it's very clear that he's on the plan of just trying to burn you from you lowering your own health. So with Flame Imp and Life Tap shut off, uh, Staz also has to kill off this Antonidas, which feels like you're in a situation that... Uh, if you don't draw the damage to win soon, you might just lose. Well, right now he has five, only five damage that can actually attack. He has the uh, the imps and the uh, the peddler, and then with the defender, that that only adds up to seven. So he's able to kill Antonidas, but has no way to actually deal with that mad scientist, who now actually represents a, a, a threat that deals two damage to his face. Yeah, which, that adds point. up with those fireballs. Well, with the fireballs plus the hero power, that should be enough to wrap up the game, assuming Staz isn't. Uh, whip out some miracle he heal. Is, over over two turns, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He, he's assembled enough damage. He can simply fireball face here. He's hidden behind the ice block. I, unless Stas has something like he's on Mystic, I, I can't really I can't really imagine. He's already played his Lotheb, and even yeah. Lotheb wouldn't be enough because the two fireballs to the face. He could still cast the the torch next turn. Yeah, it has to be because on Mystic, or it has to be some mysterious heal that we're not anticipating. Handsome guy has played defensive just enough to be rewarded. That Antonius couldn't come at a, uh, at a more opportune moment. Yeah, but he, he both needed the body to threaten to, to get Staz's board off, as well as the additional burn that he was able to generate with it. So, and Dr. Boom, usually really good, but not quite gonna do enough here. Staz can push a bunch of damage to the face, play the good Doctor, but there's that Forgotten Ooh. Torch just waiting in Handsome Guy's hand to end the game. Yeah, I think Staz, a uh, little bit of a sequential area here, but. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Forgotten Torch is going to wrap it up uh, as Staz will drop the first game. 
And a really important win for Handsome Guy, too, because you know that as soon as your Freeze Mage is revealed, it makes it a little bit weaker in the series. Starting off game one with a victory, a great edge for their Korean player. Generally speaking, you expect the Freeze Mage to come out with the win against most mm -hmm. Warlock decks. Uh, so I think that he, he didn't really get a, a big edge overall from that particular win, but uh, always good to be up a game in the match. Oh, certainly. And we'll see how it continues to develop as we get to know the players a little bit more with how they brought their decks and how they fit their lineups. Uh, but in the meantime, we also want to get to know them more as a person. So our first person that we want to feature is Handsome Guy. It turns out he's not only just a Hearthstone player, but he's also an expert pianist. Let's see what he had to say. Honda is Kreso, 매일같이 꾸준히 방송을 하는 시간이 있고 오! 그 외에는 이제 제가 좀 자유롭게 하고 싶은 걸할수 있는 직업인 것 같아요 저 스스로가 강하다고 생각하는 이유는 이제 꾸준하게 많이 할수 있는 연습량 그 꾸준함이 저의 실력의 원동력이 된것 같고요 응원해 주신 분들이 제 생각보다 많이 돼서 되게 감사하고 네, 전 그분들의 응원에 어, 기대에 부응할 수 있도록 완벽한 플레이를 할 생각입니다. 음, 사실 저는 이제 엄밀히 말하자면 한국 대표가 아니고 아시아에서 가장 높은 포인트의 선수로 왔기 때문에 어, 어떻게 보면 아시아 대표라고 할수 있고 그래서 저는 제가 아시아에서 가장 잘하는 선수 중에 한 명으로 뽑힌 것에 대해서 좀 스스로 자랑스럽고 블리즈컨 시드까지 받아서 제 스스로가 이제 세계에서도 가장 잘하는 선수 중에 한 명이 될수 있을지 I'm handsome guy, and I will not lose anybody. Hearthstone is harder than the piano, apparently. At least for this guy. I mean, the piano is a lot harder for me. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have to use two hands when I play the piano. I don't know. <laughs> At least, uh, at least that's how I, I play hard. So I usually am having one, per, one, one hand eating the popcorn, the other one, of course, <laughs> uh, using the mouse here. <laughs> you know, uh, reckon Beethoven's rolling over his grave right now. Uh, really cool to get to know our Korean player a little bit more often, uh, or sorry, a little bit more in depth. And oftentimes you look at the Korean region and you, you don't really know too much about them, but I do know that they're very vocal about supporting their players, where, whether it's Da Hyun Lee or you have Handsome Guy. And of course, you know, you have some play, popular streamers as well, like Stilo. Uh, make sure you guys are getting out there and hashtag tag HCT to let us know who you're cheering for, uh, as well as just tell about how you're watching the stream, because we know some people, they're really passionate from different countries. We have people tuning in from all over the world, and we adjust the time zones accordingly. So taking a look at game number two here, Brian, we have uh, the Freeze Mate that's out, leaving just the Druid and the Warrior. And Staz, you know, he's running out a little of space here, but I think we expect the Freeze Mate to do reasonably well against his lineup. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see what Handsome Guy's Warrior is, because if Staz is playing Freeze Mage himself, which is the, pretty much the most common tournament mage deck these days, as well as Oil Rogue, that could be a pretty pretty tough deck for him to get through with the rest of his lineup. Yeah, but if, if it's the opposite, where he's playing a, a more aggressive tempo mage, for example, it feels like it's a little bit better against both the Druid and the Warrior than it would be with Freeze Mage Certainly. by a big margin. So I'm not too worried for Staz if he's bringing a more aggressive lineup, because he has the Zoo, he has that Rogue, which we come to expect should be Oil Variant. What will be coming in game number two? Remember, Staz, he's pretty much the, the main player here representing that Southeast Asian region of the Philippines. A lot of players, they come from Taiwan, they come from Korea, Japan, and even Australia. But C is where it's at for a lot of these players, and Staz is the only member representing it. And he's looking to uh, potentially uh, 
become a professional Hearthstone player, once again, uh, as Handsome Guy was saying in his piece that he is. And we do see Unstable Portals is opening hand, so there you go. As, as you were sort of anticipating when the Warrior was not banned, definitely uh, suggest a different mage deck. But Handsome Guy, he's got a little bit of a different Warrior deck as well. He's playing Patron. Patron Warrior, which feels like it's a reasonable choice too, considering that Warlock Zoos have been really popular. Even the Paladin these days, it, it, there's a very good match with all the Whirlwind effects. Not to mention Druid seems to be one of the go-to common denominators amongst all these players. So it feels like it's a very good tier one deck to play these days. Yeah, the, the story of the Americas Championship was, was largely Control Warrior, but last weekend for the Europe Championship, we saw exclusively Patron Warrior play. Mm. So, uh, not really a surprise to see it, but uh, Staz going to need a, a pretty good opening to, uh, to deal with, with this Patron Warrior deck, though Handsome Guy doesn't necessarily have the greatest opening himself. Yeah, the, thing, the cards you're looking for when you're mulliganing with the mage, cards like Mana Worm, to start things off and be very aggressive. It's not However, cards like Mana Worm, it's Mana Worm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, it is pretty much Mana Worm, you're correct. It, that is probably the only one mana minion you keep <laughs> in the deck, so I, I stand corrected. Uh, Staz gets a two mana three three. That's not bad. That's that's not bad at all. Uh, he chooses to hold on to it for now. Pretty hilarious that the uh, Orgrimmar Aspirant might see the first tournament play in his entire lifespan <laughs> uh, through a Tempo Mage. There is Mana Worm, so not really quite on time, but still potentially in a position to uh, to start doing some damage here. Uh, Handsome Guy has a pretty pretty reasonable opening with those two two-mana minions. Sure. Uh, he doesn't have any weapons, though, but I actually think Staz would rather see weapons on Handsome Guy's side of the board because he does have that mirror image in his opening hand. Yeah, and I wonder if he's tempted to just go Flame Waker City, play Flame Waker, and then like play the Orgrimmar Aspirin and then like the mirror images. He has a lot of flexibility with the coin. There's also something to say that the, the coin with Flame Waker still gets more powerful as time goes on too. You can go for even more Flame Waker combos uh, the following turn. Uh, he doesn't really have great opportunity to, to really leverage Flame Waker here. It's, it's reasonable, but the problem is that the Flame Waker's pings are not really particularly likely to kill either of those minions. And every time we hit, as we're seeing here, uh, it is giving Handsome Guy a little bit more health, a little bit more armor because of that armor smith. It is true, but with the deck like this, it definitely feels more about the board uh, than anything else. Oh, that Frothing Berserker is pretty timely. He's able to potentially build a big Frothing behind the, uh, the trigger of that unstable ghoul dying. Hmm. It does feel a little bit optimistic to just immediately play for it when you have an opportunity to draw cards. However, being aggressive on the board against Temple Mage can be one of the most important things. Uh, the only thing that I'm worried about is if Handsome Guy loses this board to a single Frostbolt, mm -hmm. he could be in a lot of trouble. I'm a little surprised by Handsome Guy's attacks there. He chose to use both minions to attack into one of the mirror images. Because he has that Unstable Ghoul in play, he's going to be able to, he, if he attacks one into each of them, yep. the Unstable Ghoul trigger would kill both of them. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, in this case, he can't actually get through all of it with, uh, with the weapons, say, for example. Yeah, now there's going to be that taunt left over, which is potentially able to protect a minion for stats. The Berserker does go down, so uh, Staz is able to muster a bit of an offense here, and thanks to that uh, double attack from Hands Guy on one minion, he still has both of his minions protected here. Yep, and two of his most valuable minions as well. Yeah. They have a lot of synergy with spells, the good news for Handsome Guy, though, is Staz doesn't have spells. He actually has the two most expensive minions. But he does have a mirror entity, and that's a very high value one on the Sludge Belcher. Yeah, three mana. Uh, three mana Sludge Belcher is very effective. Plus, uh, you got to really protect your minions as well. Now, the second Unstable Portal. I'm ready for something special. Oh, yeah, Brian what's Gibbard. in the box? Let's one more see. time before Standard comes in. <laughs> and we, we do have those two Flame Wakers as well, so. What? Ragnaros! Oh, my God. oh dear! Oh, it's a perfect oh. Flame Waker hit! Oh, never mind. He, he, went he wasted a far. little bit, but okay. He, he, did, his, he did his job. That oh, was, yeah. That I'm giving was that Flame Waker a raise. Seriously. We were talking about putting Flame Wakers through, through college last weekend. That guy, he's, uh, he's, in, he's in good shape. I think he's getting straight A's. Uh, yeah, definitely definitely going to be profiting off of that one. Because um, the, the really funny thing is I was worried about Staz's turn six. Mm -hmm. He might, you know, say, for example, Handsome Guy was able to clear a lot of the board off. All of a sudden, he'd be missing a lot of tempo. But Ragnaros, 
That is one of the best cards you could use right now against a deck that doesn't have Execute. Well, he doesn't have Execute in his hand. He can sorry, certainly, certainly find one, right. but, but uh, right now, Handsome Guy, he's in a pretty rough spot. He's facing down a lot of damage already on the board and doesn't have a great way to deal with it. Yeah. He could use his Inner Rage to perhaps kill that Mana Worm, but he's really probably hoping to get a big, uh, a big Grim Patron turn off that Inner Rage. He can pick up a Whirlwind as well. Yeah, he's hoping, but he's also stuck in a very similar situation where he can't answer the board immediately, and his best plays are a mana or two later. What's he going to do? Handsome guy, wish he could have drawn cards. He still can to draw one card. However, in the end, that card needs to hit immediately. And even then, what does he want? Does he want a weapon? Is that too late for a weapon to have impact because Sludge Belcher is protecting everything? Yeah, this is this is definitely a really, really tough spot for Handsome Guy. That Sludge Belcher is proving to be a pretty huge problem for him. And he has a bunch of big minions in his hand, so theoretically he could hope to get to the late game and get a big minion, you know, get those big minions into play. But look at Staz's hand. He's yeah. going to curve Ragnaros on turn six into Dr. Boom on turn seven. Uh, oh, man. Well, there's going to be more fireworks, too. Because that flame, that arcane missiles essentially has four extra damage written on it. Well, let's let's hope Staz attacks into the Grim Patient before firing off so many missiles here. Because yeah. that could be disastrous. But I imagine we'll see that happen. And uh, I mean, the Sludge Belcher can take down Patron, and then Ragnaros can come down, and missiles can start flying, and then then insects will uh, will be swatted. It will die. There's only one insect remaining. There, I there mean, will only be one insect remaining. You can keep arcane missiles because you have uh, Anzanitis for eight That's mana. true. He, he can he can just keep the arcane missiles. Yeah. He does have two flame wakers. He get he gets seven damage off, but does choose to just get damage on his flame waker instead. Sure. I think also six damage, a, a, another side product of it. I'm not sure how intentional it is, but now you can't even draw one card from Battle Rage. That's true. Yeah, yeah absolutely. He definitely wants to get rid of that. Well, one good one boom deserves another. Often is they saying, but yeah. what, what do you actually want to do here? Because you have some options with Frostbolt draw. Yeah, the Frostbolt on Dr. Boom, I, I think, is, is really attractive because the two Flame Wakers will very likely uh, kill, especially the two Flame Wakers plus your hero power will very likely kill the Boom Bots. You'll be able to neutralize the Dr. Boom, at least from attacking for a turn, and potentially just kill it at the end of the turn with Ragnaros. True. Uh, or, or if you're feeling really frisky. Yeah, oh, start wow. with Arcane, Arcane missiles. missiles first. All right. Oh, and the Flame Maker survives. Wow! Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> that ends up being I... exactly enough damage <laughs> for the Frostbolt to land and optimal damage to spread across. And the Flame Wakers, they didn't need the help then. They knew they knew they just needed to go face at that point, so they, they still get to go to college. Yeah. He's still On getting scholarship. His, he's getting his full scholarship. That guy, he did, he did great work. He's going to grow up to be a great mage one day. I think Handsome Guy here just doesn't have many outs. He can't answer the Ragnaros, which is uh, un the, the biggest problem. Uh, his his honest best chance might be like Pilot Shredder, or, and then the the Ragnaros hits the Pilot Shredder I, into a Doomsayer. It really could it be. It feels that <laughs> unlikely for Handsome Guy to win this game, unless Battle Rage can also rip something off the top of his deck. Because just playing Gromosh right here doesn't feel like enough. Your opponent can set you up for a potential 50-50 lo uh, losing situation, and then either way, you lose your Gromosh or you're back at square one. What? Yeah, Gromosh just doesn't do enough here. It, you know, even if, if Ragnaros hits Gromosh, you know, you've, just, you've only traded Gromosh for a slime. Right. And if Ragnaros hits your face, you're probably dead to something else. So it looks like, yeah, Handsome Guy is just going to go ahead and play his Shredder armor up. I'm actually a little surprised to see him not play that Battle Rage. Maybe he, he thinks that he can just play it next turn as well. Maybe not reveal that you have Battle Rage, so that way you don't feel like you had the opportunity to card draw. You know, just, just to show that, you, just show that you, you're you committing to this line. I didn't play Battle Rage all game. I'm not going to play it now. A handsome guy, he needs to draw multiple cards to win. He needs to find something to enable execute plus execute here, pretty True. much. Uh, but Staz, he's not going to give him that opportunity. The Antonidas into mirror image is pretty much going to close things out, I think. Unless... There's a Doomsayer hiding in that shredder. It, there is a very small possibility. First, the Ragnar shot has to hit the pilot shredder. That and, might yeah. not happen. And <laughs> then the shredder has to have a doomsayer. Right. So whatever the percentage is of, of that doomsayer, which is one, in, let's say one in 80, uh, that gets halved. <laughs> so it's a one in 160. <laughs> Extremely unlikely, Brian. I mean, handsome guy at this point, he knows what time it is. 
It's time to pray. Oh. I mean, that's a pretty good outcome. All right. Wait. Uh, I mean, the stars <laughs> were there, except it was daytime. Yeah, the, I mean, the Shredder even took both uh, both Flame Waker hits for the team, too. It, 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 it jumped in front of sure. every bullet coming at it. I mean, Battle Rage can draw another Battle Rage into some other cards. Slam? All right. Slam can execute. The problem is he needs to kill everything. <laughs> yeah. There's still that, that pesky Ragnaros sitting there. Uh, he can he Whirlwind here. I mean, me. he's he gets playing his turn. These are all legal plays oh, for him to make. He found Execute, but you can't Execute them all. <laughs> uh, you're right. Uh, if only Execute was was Brawl, I guess, in this situation. <laughs> Even though you wouldn't have enough mana. Handsome yeah, Guy sure. is going to opt to, to tap here. Staz going to tie up the series. And a big win with the Tempo Mage, which was one of the, the decks that we were... We haven't seen very much. You know, I know Robert Wing's actually w watching all the broadcasts. He's not joining us this weekend. He's probably really excited to see some non-Freeze Mage action here. I, I definitely tend to favor Tempo Mage over Freeze Mage. I'm more of a, you know... Get a, get a Ragnaros off my unstable portal, blow my opponent up kind of player. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to see that in action. It's true. Uh, Ragnaros there was definitely the icing on the cake, uh, but the most important thing was he had something to play really powerful on turn six and utilize his mana because he was going to be doing nothing for a while. So Staz grabs a very important victory in this best of five. Uh, let's get to know him a little bit better before we get into game number three, but we want to remind you guys to once again... Uh, T t tell us who you're voting for on the polls. It looks like Staz is actually pulling significantly Ooh. ahead here, Kibler. Yeah, it looks like we might have a, a pretty heavy Filipino audience going on right now. So, Certainly. Uh, yeah. they're, uh, they're very loud and they're very proud. Let's get to know Staz from the Philippines a little bit better before going to game number three. Hi, I'm Staz. I'm 25 years old from the Philippines. I'm a product engineer in Cypress. It's an American semiconductor company. In 2014, uh, I used to play Hearthstone uh, full time. You can wake up anytime you want, you can sleep whenever you want. Yeah, it's pretty good. And there's no pressure at all. Maybe just winning the big tournaments, but going full time, it's pretty relaxing. I miss that life. <laughs> On my early Hearthstone days, uh, I, just, I was just playing casually. I saw a tournament online, decided to join. I did great. Then, yeah, at the end of the year, I got qualified for the BlizzCon qualifiers. Uh, unfortunately, my visa got denied and I wasn't able to come. I was pretty upset, but being upset won't do anything, so I just decided to move on. Pretty much, I wasted a huge opportunity. Fortunately, this time, uh, my visa got approved. Then I was able to come here and participate again. Got a chance for BlizzCon. I was really happy. <laughs> I was able to go here. This is actually my first time in the U.S., my first time I got into a plane. Yeah, pretty lucky to have a second chance. I'm Staz, I'm gonna do it for the Philippines. Another player with a second chance. Last week, a player that was able to get a shot at redemption, Neyman, ended up winning the Winter Championship. Can Staz, who was denied in 2014 a chance to compete from something that was completely out of his hands. He really yeah. tried to get a visa as best as he could, but he was unable to for the America's Championship and was thus replaced. Uh, can he really flip this around to be an opportunity for him to qualify? I mean, he was just saying he, he misses that life, that pro Hearthstone player life. So, right. you know, winning this tournament would be uh, potentially a, a big step toward uh, getting back to those relaxing days he was talking about in the video. Sure. I mean, sure. Uh, it's definitely, in his opinion at least, more fun than being the engineer uh, <laughs> of what he's doing. Uh, but we'll find out. I mean, his journey has just begun here in the top eight. Uh, now that his mage has also been gone, we're left with Druid and Warrior up against Rogue and Warlock. You know, four unique classes here, which makes me pretty happy. How do you evaluate the lineups remaining? Is anyone advantage here, Kibler? I think that it's potentially pretty close. The Rogue from uh, Staz has the possibility to, to do reasonably well against Patron Warrior. And we're going to assume this is a fairly standard mid-range Druid coming out of Handsome Guy. That's a deck that can that can really take down either of those decks. I think that if that were Control Warrior, the Rogue may struggle. Uh, but the, the Zoo matchup, I think, generally is very favorable for the Zoo deck against the Druid. Yep. But uh, usually the Patron Warrior has a bit of an edge in that matchup. What? All right, well, let's put all that on hold. I love seeing good rogue play. In fact, I believe Staz is the only rogue player uh, in top eight here. Really cool to see people still believe in the rogue. Last time on the America's Championship, the two rogue players end up getting very far, to so the top four at least, with Chess Dude 
and Amnesiac end up winning the tournament. Yeah, we, we've seen Rogue. Uh, it's a class that a lot of players kind of overlook in many cases, but sort of comes out in major competitive events and tends to do very well. We actually saw of three Rogue players in the World Championship last year, two of them met in the finals. That's right, uh, with uh, Oskaka and Hotform. And, uh, you know, of course, some other players played Rogue 2 in the tournament. Uh, definitely a class that slept on. People look at the lack of expansion cards being used in competitive decks. However, they forget that at its core, it's still really powerful to be prepping stuff. It's still really insane to get Violet Teacher out, making these tokens and powerful plays. It turns out that the the classic Rogue cards are pretty good. So <laughs> don't necessarily need all that expansion uh, support. Druid is another another class that has uh, tended to do pretty well with just what it started with in the classic True. set. I was about to say, well, we're looking at another class that actually has done really well. They are strong, independent classes <laughs> that don't need no expansions. Uh, they are perfectly viable on their own with a lot of these core cards. You're looking at Savage Roar and Force of Nature. You're looking at cards like the and Ancient of Lore, being able to refill the hand. Um, I, I am really looking forward to seeing if Handsome Guy has tech as Druid in some capacity. We've seen them outfit cards like Mind Control Tex. We've seen uh, Harrison Jones. I wonder if he's playing Lotheb as well, which is a really common card, but a really powerful one to shut down the Rogue. Yeah, there's a number of a number of sort of tech options. Harris Jones, as you mentioned, one of the one of the really big ones for this particular matchup. Uh, but another big card in this matchup is a big card in a lot of matchups. Doctor yep. Boom. Boom is particularly strong against Rogue. Rogue is primarily damage based in its removal. So a seven seven minion, especially this early in the game, can be really difficult for the Rogue to deal with. Definitely. And if Staz had a little bit more mana, sure, actually dealing with the Boom wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But the reality is, he doesn't have Innervate in his hand, so he has to fight with what he has right here, right now. Innervate would be pretty good in Rogue. Options. It would. They actually do. <laughs> like prep, they actually you just get more do them. have Innervate. <laughs> uh, even slightly better than Innervate in some scenarios. In this case, if Staz had it, he'd be able to prep Fan and then go into Viscerate, maybe even Poison, figure out some way to do some tricky stuff. But because he only has five, if he fans, he would have to trade in his teacher if he wants to kill the Dr. Boom. Yeah, which, sometimes that's what you gotta do. You know, the the Doctor Boom is just a huge threat in the board. He could fan and then eviscerate. Not quite, not quite a great position. He'll be left up with just a couple of small minions. He looks like he may be just playing the base tank, playing deadly poison, eviscerate, and just go at it with his face here. Okay. This does allow him to remove Doctor Boom. He does take seven damage in the process. Yeah, it is pretty brutal because you're putting all your eggs in the basket of saying like, please don't have swipe or something to remove it. Um, and in this case, Handsome Guy does. Though the key here the, is that uh, Handsome Guy, if he does swipe this turn, will be using pretty much all of his mana to do so, which will leave him without a board. So Staz just kind of gets the initiative back True. next turn. True. And in that in that case, I really like Staz's play. Though, yeah, I mean, it, he, he does sacrifice his, his life total, uh, uh, quite a bit of it, in fact, but is able to at least preserve uh, the fact that Handsome Guy has to react still to what he has in play. Sure. Well, Handsome Guy has several lines that he can take. He can see the outcome of the Boom Bots, and if the Boom Bot hits Vi's Heater for two, for example, then he has Pilot Shredder coming down, and Living Roots can clean it up. Uh, that seems to be an idealistic scenario. He can go for the very safe approach as well of just trying to swipe. There also is a possibility of going for Drew the Claw, whether you want to charge it and take out a minion or play it defensively. It looks like he's going to see. No, it does not hit the Violet Teacher. So he's just going to go ahead and play that Druid. It is in cat form. It is going to take out the Violet Teacher. I do like the fact that he take out the Violet Teacher immediately. It, it is a huge threat from Rogue because of how much damage that stacks up over time. Um, and the reality is your opponent has a dagger that's 3-1, so it's not like he wants to use that unoptimally. But that Banana Knives did end up being the exact card. And Handsome Guy, you can see, already getting a little uncomfortable based off how the way this the ebb and flow has been going this game. But it's worth noting, though, that Staz, because of that face tank of the Dr. Boom, because of the Boom Bot going face, he's already down to just 18 life. And we do see that Force of Nature Savage is already looming in Handsome Guy's hand. He's a few mana away. He's only at six mana right now. But uh, Staz was going to need to apply pressure and end this game pretty quickly, or that'll threaten to actually just end the game on the spot. One thing to also note as well is that, um, you know, Staz 
also has oil, so I feel like even though Handsome Guy does have the Force Nature Savage, where it's very easy to just ignore the burst that Rogue has. Also, one of the most important cards Saz has is cards like Azure Drake, because that helps keep his hand healthy amount. Like you have a 4 4 I can attack, you also have an ability to draw into a spell. Rogue, without Azure Drake, without sprints, actually has a very weak amount of uh, potential in very early game, but these cards extend their lifespan a lot. Yeah, Rogue and Druid kind of have similar strengths in that if they're left with any kind of board presence, they can do a ton of damage out of nowhere. Rogue can do it a little bit faster because of things like prep, uh, but the, the Druid has the more consistent combo because they have uh, the two copies of Savage Druid, two copies of Force Nature do so much just by themselves. Rogues do it, man. We'll see if it ends up being... Ooh, okay, okay. Oh, Assassin's Blade. It's a little bit of an unusual choice. Pretty powerful in some matchups. That's a nice Shredder Pilot. And also, Yikes. that sets up a 4-4 four, four and a 4-1 that Swipe is going to clean up beautifully. However... Let's let's be let's level here. If it was a three two, it would have done the same true. amount of damage. It's true. It just happens to be one of the better three attack minions that are in the shredder. In fact, in fact, the best three attack. If that were Bloodfin Raptor, the game would be exactly the same. So. Yes, <laughs> agreed. Yeah, but Staz down to just fifteen. Handsome guy going into an eight mana turn next turn. So Staz got to be really scared about that low life total. I do like the fact that he played Swipe, so maybe this is an opportunity to play by teach number two, and even maybe even consider flurrying. Um, however, one thing that you have to be mindful of is like your opponent's going on turn eight, so you still have one more turn to play on Force Nature Savage Roar. It's it's still like uncomfortable, but it's doable. And you have to consider too, if you play Azure Drake, what cards are you looking for to draw to fit out the rest of the mana? Yeah, he could. He's only played one of his fans, I believe, so he could potentially draw into the second copy of Fan of Knives. It's true. It's kind of ambitious. He could also just re he just equip a weapon. He's not really worried about getting comboed next turn. It's the turn after that's the scary one. Right. And the problem is that Staz also needs to try, you know, prevent uh, present lethal as well because if you know, these these two minions on the board aren't really what's scary. What's scary is the cards in Handsome Guy's hand. It looks like he is just going to go ahead and play that Blade Flurry to clear these yeah. off. I like this play uh, from Staz. You're anticipating that your opponent wants to play a minion on turn eight. The only thing is that if Handsome Guy just hero powers and Staz has nothing to do, then uh, he ends up just dying to the Force Nature Savage Roar. And Handsome Guy, he also draws Drew the Claw, which I think is a pretty good draw because now you can even charge that to the face and play around the potential farce here of, uh, playing, uh, uh, of putting him outside the range of Force Nature Savage Roar. Yeah, uh, Staz playing that second Blade Flurry there, it, it feels a little bit defensive to me. It feels like he is also under the, the onus to actually end the game. He's now used both copies of Blade Flurry, and, and it looks like with Handsome Guy at 24 life, it's going to be difficult for him to close out the game, even if he weren't being threatened by combo next turn. Sure, sure. Uh, I can definitely see how the line of play feels like you're giving up your way to win to just stay alive. And sometimes the trade-off's not worth it, because in the end, you can stay alive as much as you want, but Drew's going to draw more minions. They're going to draw more damage. It looks like... Going to go ahead and just cycle the wrath. Oh, Lotheb is a, such a great card. That is fantastic because Lotheb uh, cuts down so many of the things that Staz could possibly have next turn. And the only things that he could really do to get rid of this Lotheb from the board uh, is to attack into it with his face at this point. Sure. He could he could attack both minions and play like a super expensive eviscerate. But then you're you're just able to potentially force roar an opponent with nothing on the board down to one. Right. And you still have force of nature and druid of the claw waiting in the hand to finish them off. Yeah, he needs an SI seven agent to be drawn here. Yep. And fan number two. Look at that. <laughs> well, the reality is he was going to draw deadly poison. However, this game is over. Druid has taken it from the rogue. Too much damage early on. That you know, that even getting that earlier game, Doctor Boom and gain that seven damage in early was so huge here for Handsome Guy. Yeah, Dr. Boom is a really powerful card when it comes out in turn seven. When it comes out in turn four, it is uh, game defined. So that's gonna wrap it up, and Handsome Guy takes a really convincing lead. Just has to get one more win with that Patron Warrior deck, and Staz is gonna go back to the drawing board. Yeah, we have Patron Warrior remaining for Handsome Guy, and then the Rogue we just saw, as well as the Warlock we saw in the first game for Staz. It seems like the Patron Warrior lines up quite well against the Warlock deck. Uh, the Rogue is a class that can give Patrons trouble sometimes because the Blade Flurries can clear out the boards of Patrons, so the combo sort of element of the deck isn't quite as powerful. It's true. Uh, no matter how many Patrons you create, in the end, the Flurry can just wipe it out. 
You have great single target removal as well. If they're playing, um, you know, Gromosh, you can still deal with it. Not to mention that with you're so dependent on having Death Spite because of cards like Violet Teacher and whatnot. So if you don't draw, you can be in trouble. However, the opposite can be true too. Rogue is a class that also can beat itself. Uh, the expression usually means that Rogue just often is the time. Uh, Rogue is the reason why it loses because it draws awkwardly into stuff. You draw prep, prep into Fan of Knives, and you have nothing else to do. So it, it's sometimes can be pretty um, awkward to say the least. Yeah, the opening hand of prep, prep, deadly poison doesn't really do very much. Sure, sure. <laughs> Into like an oil, and you're like, well, I have no minions. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, and the, the Patron Warrior has a lot of tools to deal with a lot of the early minions the Rogue is able to uh, to put up there as well. Yeah. Well, uh, I think the the big question is, even if he gets past the Rogue versus Patron, can Staz also win with the Warlock, uh, which is also a matchup that might not feel like in his favor uh, against the Patron Warrior. Um, and if, that, if that's the case, I feel like if I'm handsome guy, I'm sitting pretty with how I feel about the rest of this series, Kibler. You You are pretty pretty. Oh, thank you. I said if I was handsome guy. Though, oh, I, oh, I thought you said. I, I thought right you were saying you were. Okay. Right, right, right now, I'm caster guy, <laughs> and, I, I, and this guy is the one who's going to be winning a lot more money, and potentially a spot in the Horizon World Championship if he's able to take this game one step closer. It's going to game number four. Staz does choose to go with his rogue deck. At this point, all of his decks have been revealed. There's none of the sort of gamesmanship that can come up in these early matches mm -hmm. to try and conceal information about your decks for future matches. So it just looks like he's going with the, the deck that he probably feels has the strongest chance to win, just to kind of get momentum back in his side. Yeah, you know, for a while, it, this is obviously a, a common uh, meme, if you will, within Rogue players that they even think it, everything is favored for Rogue. Uh, but there was a period of time where people would bring Rogue to counter the Patron Dominance, back when Patron Warrior uh, was oppressive, uh, nearly as, as dominant as like the Roman Empire or like the Persian armies, right? You always see Patron Warrior everywhere with the Frothy Berserker Warsong Commander combinations. Um, people used to bring Rogue to try to kill it. And back two then. Warsong Commander? Two Song. <laughs> <laughs> It feels like it feels like Warsaw Commander is not the one backstabbing. It's the one that Etu Ben Brode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, Staz with one of those awkward draws right now. Uh -oh. The opening hand of Lotheb Assassin's Blade. Yeah. Edwin Van Cleef. It doesn't Sprint. get more expensive. Doesn't than do that. very much. It doesn't get pricier than that. And Big Game Hunter too is. That's a card he might have wanted last game around yeah. this time when the the, the Doctor Boom oh, came down and turned four. So there is a, several tech into this deck. Let's talk about it a little bit as um, we see that handsome guy, he's pretty much gonna play as much as he can on curve to make sure Rogue doesn't dominate it. When you're playing cards like Big Game Hunter and Assassin's Blade Killer, what are you taking out from the regular deck here? It, it's not really clear. Uh, usually you'll see maybe one of, of these cards in a deck, maybe at most two. Uh, a lot of Rogue decks have Piloted Shredder as an additional four on top of Violet Teacher. We haven't seen that yet from Staff, so it's possible that he has more of these situational tech cards and less of sort of generically powerful cards like Piloted Shredder. Sure, there's a couple of flexible spots. Erthering Farseer or two is mm -hmm. usually one of them. Fan of Knives, number two is yep. also optional. Uh, just considering sometimes you just don't want to draw the card, you just want the card. Yeah. And then you know, the, the Shredders, like you mentioned. Also wondering if Staz has anything like heal bots. Instead of a heal bot, he chose to be really aggressive with the uh, Assassin's Blade as well. Yeah, we haven't seen any healing from Staz in either of these games. We also have not seen any of those pilot Shredders as well. So those are, are looking like they may have been the slots that he, he flexed with those tech cards. And it could be a raid directly on the meta itself. The fact that Assassin's Blade is much stronger against a class or a deck like Freeze Mage, for example, compared to to uh, dealing with an, a, a, a face hunter. It, it speaks volumes of Staz's read on the metagame. He's playing defensive slower cards that have a lot of more implication against slower decks. But yeah, here, I think he'd love a piloted shredder if he could find one. But right now, that's a yeah. very situational hand, and the situation for none of them is now. Well, he could play Big Game Hunter for tempo. Uh, that is a card that you're not exactly getting a lot of value in this matchup anyways until you're killing off Dr. Boom specifically. You, Van Cleef for the, sad, the saddest Van Cleef? The one that just lived to absolutely zero potential, slept in every <laughs> single weekday. He has, cut home he has no brotherhood. It's the, 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 uh... He got kicked out of his fraternity very early <laughs> for not doing the chores, always waking up, drinking a little too much at the Hearthstone. The Diner. only child. 
Uh, he played a little too much Overwatch. Didn't study for his classes. <laughs> Handsome guy here has the Dread Corsair, which is pretty reasonable to threaten. I don't think there's a need to even attack with this Death Spite at all. I think you can just you can camp on it for a while. Yeah, chooses just to go ahead and develop a little bit more to the board, armor up. And that Van Cleef, he's, uh, there is a heal bot, okay. so th didn't shave any of those. You're starting to really see how Rogue, I mean, we, we kind of uh, emphasize it with drawing awkwardly, but a better way to describe it is the fact that Rogue does need to actually curve and play minions. That's why having those four drops was so important. A lot of times you had spells like Deadly Poison, um, you know, Fan of Knives, and honestly, even having like the eviscerates on to play early on was good. But by turn four, you want to start pressuring the board and turning it on. That's just giving up more and more space here. No, well, he does have Pilot of Shredder as well. Okay. So he, that Assassin's Blade proved to be very strong that turn. He was able to take down both of Handsome Guy's minions with his own, leaving with just the Armorsmith. Pilot of Shredder, not amazing right now. There is that Sludge Belch on the other side of the table. <laughs> does choose to just play the Lotheb. That can die cleanly to the death spite if Handsome Guy chooses to take that route. Mm -hmm. I think he recognizes Lotheb is his strongest minion right now. And he says, rather than let Pilot Shredder just be eaten up mm -hmm. uh, very quickly and then not not getting any value off of potential trades, he'd rather just get the Lotheb out of the way. And I, I mean, Staz might even just sprint next turn if he feels like it's too slow to react to the board here. Yeah, if Handsome Guy does choose to use his death spite as well, the Sludge Belter will also take damage, which can potentially open up to dying to Eviscerate. So you can potentially oh, play the point. Pilot Shredder plus Eviscerate next turn to take out that minion as well. Also a, a valid opportunity, too. Now, Handsome Guy, he has a Sir Finley Murgleton. That's a card that you don't often see in Patrons. It's more of a tech decision. Why play Sir Finley Murgleton here? Sir Finley is, is popular in a lot of Patron Warrior decks for Mostly Fire Blast. That's usually the, the hero power you're looking for, both as a board control tool, as well as an additional way to activate your Grim Patrons without expending any resources. All right, it's a really cool inclusion. Plus, sometimes you can even have other hero powers that are great. Um, looking at Life Tap, for example, if you're in a situation where you're running out of cards as patron. We've all been there before. And sometimes healing your, your minions as well. Sure. You know, your, your patrons that get down to one health, it's, I'll yep. heal them and just start attacking them in again, and I'm going to make more patrons. Well, uh, that is the Nightmare. Uh, however, that is not a reality for Staz at all. He has the Shredder and the Eviscerate play, like you mentioned. And now Staz, while uh, it's still annoying for his, his health to be picked up away like this, the reality is because he saved Big Game Hunter and Handsome Guy almost certainly will be playing Dr. Boom here. Yeah, Staz is actually getting into a pretty strong position yeah. here. He has gotten a lot of value off the Assassin's Blade. Uh, he has, as you mentioned, the Big Game Hunter to deal with this Dr. Boom. And he even has anti Keelbot sitting in his hand, waiting to get him back a bit of that lost life uh, mm -hmm. that he has expended by attacking into so many of Handsome Guy's minions. All right, well, Staz even has the flexibility of prep sprint before he plays the Big Game Hunter, uh, and that because he will have four mana remaining. The other option is to play Big Game Hunter and Antique Healbot immediately, so that way he can use up all of his mana and then prep sprint with five mana the following turn. That also might not be too bad at all. Ooh. Well, there you go. Shredder only takes uh, one. That's a champion. Yeah. Champion Shredder. And now Staz is kind of playing in sort of a mid-range minion deck here with uh, that Assassin's Blade giving him his card advantage. Uh, that Lotheb for Handsome Guy, though, that could turn up big since Staz's only remaining cards in hand are all spells. Yeah, you're right. He can't play the sprint uh, on the following turn that way. Let's see how the Boombot outcome rolls. Uh, snipes to Pirate Shredder. You know, that Wild Pyromancer doesn't actually do anything here because I, I anticipate him also. <laughs> Speak to me. Oh, he's gonna just whirlwind here. Okay, he's, that's looks like he's gonna fine. Yeah, he's gonna choose to get the card draw off the whirlwind. He's gonna be able to remove that wild pyromancer, I believe, with Sir Finley now. Mm -hmm. And I, I would expect him to likely uh, ping his acolyte for an additional card. I think he said he feels like he can play a little bit greedier, but I would uh, like to see him go for more cards. Given the context of his hand being uh, pretty weak outside of just that one yeah, interage. Well, with, with that that uh, ghoul, he doesn't need. There's no real reason for him to ping the acolyte. Uh, he, he's able to get the acolyte defended, so he's able to, to 
uh, put a chip in Staz's board position here, and now Staz can't really get this anti kill ball to hit anything. So, Handsome Guy's going to get both draws off of this Acolyte, unless Staz does something like. Uh, blade flurry. <laughs> yeah, blade, blade flurry. flurry. Yeah, blade flurry. But then you're giving up your blade flurry. Right. It ends up being patron. ends up being a pretty poor use of resources overall. I expect we're gonna see probably prep sprint here from Staz to try and find something else. Sure. Si seven agent would be also okay. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of ways to reach past it. And there is a flurry. There's a flurry. And there's even a farce here. So this deck actually has a lot of individuals. It's got it deck. all. Yeah. <laughs> this rogue decks. Pretty much got everything. It's a Swiss army knife of rogue decks, if you will. Does appear to be that. And some guy gonna try to start pressuring right back. He's got Patron uh, with Whirlwinds in the following turns. He's still taking it pretty slow because he has the ability to make six Patrons. And he needs all the mana possible. As you, as you mentioned earlier, the making a bunch of Patrons against Rogue isn't nearly as powerful as it is against other classes simply because of that Blade Flurry we do see in Staz's hand. Oh yeah. Often you want to try to pair your Patron turn with Battle Rage, so you're able to, to refill and get additional resources if the mm -hmm. opponent does clear your board. I mean, Staz still has some reasonable plays. He has the Azure Drake and the Farseer, and that uses up your mana while being able to uh, still keep up this weapon. And the fact is, this is something that for a while, when Harrison Jones wasn't a very wasn't a very popular card in the meta game, you saw some rogue players just sit on a weapon for a long time and make your opponents really afraid. I just sprinted. There's a high chance that I have Blade Flurry. Will you go for this handsome guy? Will you start spreading the patron love? Because if so, I'm just going to to destroy your board with a Blade Flurry. Yeah, I mean, handsome guy's in a pretty bad spot here. He he had a good early game, but Staz was able to stabilize and get a lot of value out of this Assassin's Blade, and it's still giving him value now, even if just the threat that it can potentially enable a blade. I mean, it, it is intimidating just by the sound of its name, Brian Gibbler. It's, it's <laughs> Assassin's Blade. Very, uh, a very strong weapon indeed. Probably the strongest Rogue has. Well, uh, Handsome Guy just going to play the slow board control, not commit the Grim Patron just yet. Says, if you have the Flurry, use it now. Yeah, this is, this is a, uh, a nice play from Handsome Guy here. It does put him in a position where he's potentially trying to bait out a Blade Flurry from Staz mm -hmm. while he has the Grim Patron Whirlwind in his hand. And thanks to that Fire Blast from Sir Finley, he's able to Grim Patron ping his Grim Patron, then Whirlwind to make four with just those two cards. Sure, but that's not going to work. Staz picked up Eviscerate, so with Vile oh, Teacher, Eviscerate. And I don't mind just using the last charge of the weapon here, considering that you do have another Deadly Poison to start going at it. Yeah, Staz is in a great position here. He is facing quite a bit of life and armor from Handsome Guy, but he has pretty much full control this game right now. Okay, uh, another teacher. So more minions, and Rogue is just benefiting off of the passivity of Handsome Guy. Uh, Fire War Axe, not gonna be enough. He's just pinging, playing the weapon, and just waiting for his time. Yeah, Handsome Guy here, he's trying to play a uh, defensive game, kind of run Staz out of resources. The problem being, of course, that Staz has, he's Azure Drake, he's sprinted, he still has five cards in hand, and Handsome Guy only has two. Right, and, and Handsome Guy might sit on this turn again, so he can get even higher patron value. Because um, if he goes for it now, that's not even that imposing and hard to deal with, just two patrons, but four is the, is very headache, uh, much of a headache here. This is a Tinker Sharp Sword Oil for Staz. That can represent a lot of damage. Yeah, usually one Sharp Sword Oil is uh, six damage for the immediate burst, but you have nine for the attack uh, over Pay two turns. Class. And then you ha combine that with the fact that Deadly Poison adds another four. Uh, it's, it adds up very quickly here. I am ready to learn. Staz. The oil goes, goes on a minion that cannot attack, so it does not get the damage right away. And this is very likely going to encourage Handsome Guy to finally fire off that Whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Oh, certainly Ooh. with a Battle Rage. And that's that's what he was looking for. That's exactly what he's hoping to find. He does choose to Whirlwind, and then and then he's going to Battle Rage right away. Huh. I'm a little surprised we didn't see a ping before First. the Battle Rage. Right. I, I suspect maybe he was trying to find 
a Oh, I think execute. he wants to kill the teacher, right? With the Yeah, okay. He's going to go ahead and kill the teacher. I, I think that's that's totally reasonable play here from from Handsome Guy. He does clear his opponent's board, leaving himself with those two patrons. The difference between two patrons and three versus your opponent also having that that teacher in play. It's it's this is a little bit more of a defensive play, which is kind of the style we've seen Handsome Guy approach this entire game with. Sure. Makes sense. Well, uh, another Deadly Poison, and we kind of painted this scenario as a hypothetical uh, earlier in this game, uh, Brian. The fact that you might have all spells with Deadly Poison and prep, but uh, no minions. And all things combined, looks like it's 16 damage, which is still about half your opponent's life total. Yeah, because of Handsome Guy having that Fire Blast, Staz has to remove every Grim Patron here. He can't, if it, to remove any number of Grim Patrons, just remove them all. There's no huh. there's no point to removing just a single Grim Patron because the, the last remaining Patron will still be able to spawn additional ones with no card cost to Handsome Guy. So it looks like Staz is kind of trying to play this slow, doesn't want to fire off his Blade Flare right now and is hoping perhaps that Handsome Guy will commit more to this board or perhaps that he's hoping to have a stronger tempo turn where he's able to, to actually play a minion and then use the Blade Flurry uh, to force Handsome Guy to react to him. Yeah, Staz really wants uh, Handsome Guy to play more minions. You can look at fl um, Blade Flurry being akin to a card like Flame Strike. Sure, you could use Flurry, but you're essentially oh, no. using Flurry to kill one card, mm -hmm. and that's your only Flurry, versus if your opponent played other cards, uh, you're going to want that Flurry again. So a really disciplined move here from Staz. Well, the problem is that Handsome Guy has no real incentive to deploy anything else. He can simply attack for six damage this turn, ping one of his minions, then threaten to attack for nine damage the next turn. There's no real reason for him to, to actually add any more minions to this board. I agree. And I like Handsome Guy recognizing this. Chooses not to attack just in case his opponent's going to go a little bit further. Staz, once again... Uh, presented with quite that conundrum. Ends up using the Flurry because he can't take this much damage. So Handsome Guy baits out the Blade Flurry, and now would be an opportune time for him to once again start flooding. Yeah, Handsome Guy has that second patron, and because of his hero power, can just generate a patron immediately with it. Yeah, also can slam the draw card. Yeah, he can slam the draw card and generate an additional patron if he so chooses on the other one. That does leave a one health patron, which is vulnerable just to uh, Staz's weapon. But at this point, Staz is actually very, very low life. So a, uh, an additional patron that he has to attack into is still a big threat. Oh, man. Second sprint is pretty much what Staz wanted outside of the minion itself. So he uses the preparation. He'll pick up other cards that are really useful. I think oh, SI7 Agent cards. is one of the cards that he'll pick up inevitably. He's running pretty low. There is the SI7, so he is able to Huge. kill both of these. He can kill <laughs> the Grim Patron, and he can use Deadly Poison to allow him to attack into the other Grim Patron. Mm -hmm. And this leaves Staz with very little, uh, very little resources left as far as life total is concerned. Oh, he's actually going to go ahead and backstab here. Yeah, I think he doesn't want to lower his health any further. Right, no, He's I, almost at fatigue. So. Right, that's that's the thing is that it, I'm guessing he probably doesn't have much in the way of oh, uh, of ways to actually win the game remaining. Handsome huh. guy's actually kind of just running him out of of any Rats. kind of win conditions. Yeah, uh, he's already used the assassin's blade and the oil. He's used up all of his teachers. He's used up even the Van Cleave. And this is one of the the issues that. Rogue decks can run into because they have so many things that sort of cycle them through the, their deck. Things like the Fan of Knives, Azure Drake, as well as Sprint. You can burn through your deck so fast, and so much of your deck is taken up by cards like this that you don't have that many threats. I think the last card of stats might actually be a Sap. I haven't seen a he, second. If sap. he has two Saps, that's a Sap. I'm out of oh, it's a second. The flurry. second flurry. I apologize. But either way, but he's now. Uh, yeah, he he can can't win. He can't deal really any damage anymore. He has only his weapon to deal damage well, with. He's right. gone through all of his minions. Yeah. It looks like, yeah, he's just going to just gonna concede. And Handsome Guy, with that controlling style, runs Staz out of threats and takes the match three games to one. Yeah, I'm Patron Warrior, but I'll play Control Warrior if I have to. <laughs> Playing the, uh, the, the mage hero power to perfection and be able to use his defensive style to take the series. Staz, unfortunately, runs into the age-old problems of 
Mo spells, mo problems. That's, <laughs> that's, how the that's rogue... why I like minions. See, I just got to attack them in the face of the minions. You don't run out that way. He's all about the rogue life. <laughs> it's all about that rogue life. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of the way the cards fall here. But, you know, I do want to commemorate uh, that handsome guy was put in several awkward situations this series. And he, I think he played to the best of his ability in some of them. And he ends up taking a crucial Series 1 victory, advancing to day number two in the winner's match. Now, Saz, he'll have an opportunity to stay alive tomorrow. He'll play off against uh, the loser of UCCU versus Da Hyoni. Uh, and that's going to wrap up our first series of the day. It's been a pleasure, Kipler. We're going to toss it over to Doa, who is standing with our winner, Handsome Guy, for a few words. Hey, guys, I'm here with Handsome Guy, the winner of our first match. So we'll get the easy stuff out of the way. How does it feel to get the first win of the tournament? <웃음> 아, 게임 하는 내내 좀 긴장을 많이 했었는데 아, 이기고 나니까 좀 마음이 편안해지고 어, 지금 좀 네. 이제 한좀 걱정이 확 없어져서 좀 기분이 좋네요. 네. In the beginning he was very nervous, but after he won he's very relaxed and he's very happy right now. I suppose it does uh, it does kind of help. So I mean, speaking of being relaxed, you've been to international tournaments before. This isn't the first one. Does it get easier as time goes on? Do you feel like each international tournament you get more used to the travel, more used to sort of like uh, being in this hotel situation? Is it easier this time around? 그 국제대를 많이 경험한 걸로 알, 알고 계신데요. 그 국제를 할 때마다 그 비행이나 아니면은 호텔에서 먹는 방법이나 그런 것에 대해서 좀 많이 좀 나아지나요? 계속 대를 진행하다 보니까. 어 사실 국제 대회가 많지는 않고 예전에 비아 게임 한번 나간 경험이 있는데 어 경험이 있어서 저도 좀 나아졌을 줄 알았는데 사실 <웃음> 별거 없네요. 또 여전히 긴장을 하고 조금 어좀 이런 건좀 고쳐 고치면 좋겠는데 아직 좀 부족한 것 같아요. 그런 경험적인 부분은. Actually, he only went to one international event, was Bia tournament, and he thought it would be better because he already experienced it once. But it looks like he's still very nervous. And he has a lot of things to improve about travel and staying calm. Okay, well, speaking about uh, nerves and sort of mental state, now you got here based on your points in total, and a lot of that comes from being a great ranked play player. So when you're doing those really long ladder sessions, how do you kind of keep your mental state? How do you keep from being tilted, kind of keep your head in the game? How do you do it? あ、もっと番組ごとレンクで進行しましたんで、ちょっと困ります。あ、レンクは今、ほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほんのほ
Yeah, exactly. We were kind of wondering what kind of things that he took out of the deck. He had Assassin's Blade, obviously not expecting too many Harrisons at this tournament, so that can be something that vi that's very powerful, especially against control decks. We saw him, at least I was able to cast his games in the Southeast Asia preliminaries, and he actually defeated Warrior, I mean, a Control Warrior, which is very impressive, and maybe that Assassin's Blade goes toward that. Also had the Healbot, the Farseer, the BGH, and the Van Cleef, which are very interesting inclusions. Usually you put only some of them, but he was able to fit all of them, wondering if he maybe cut a sap here or there to fit that in. Yeah, and uh, we, we actually have a clip here that showcases towards the end of the match, um, there was a, a big turn where Staz had, you know, 10 mana here and just a handful of spells. And this was pretty late into the game uh, where, you know, he played a lot of these creatures and uh, some of those tech cards had already been played. So, DT, why don't you walk me through this play here a little bit? Well, this is kind of a situation where Staz played a little bit too cute. You know, he was thinking, okay, I want to get as much value out of this Blade Flurry as possible. Saw only the two patrons, realized he's only taking, uh, you know, six, maximum seven damage. Probably figures Handsome Guy is going to go for, you know, Mage Hero Power here. Only has those Blade Flurry options in hand. Only has the way to buff his, his own Hero Power. So, basically, he's just playing a little bit too cute here. And Handsome Guy, as you can see here, coming on the other side, he plays it very smart. Picks up the other patron, doesn't go all in. You can kind of see him thinking about his choice here. And very smart to be, be very patient and gets, you know, stats to play the Blade Flurry in the end anyway. Yeah, and uh, Papa Smithy, do you, do you agree with this line of play here as well? Do you think uh, he was rewarded for, you know, being patient or punished? And I'm just, you know, you, you try and think about what Staz is considering, and you have to remember that Handsome Guy at this point had used a lot of his minions already. Mm -hmm. I think Staz had that read, okay, he's got two spells in hand, I want to see him go all in with a Whirlwind or an Inner Rage, and then I'll get more Blade Fire value. But the one thing I think he failed to really account for is the unique thing about this game. Because Sir Finley Murgleton had already been played, the Mage Hero Power allows him to generate more board pressure, more board presence, without actually having to use a card, which is the reality of the turn, which is able to ping off, Handsome Guy was able to ping off one of those patrons, overextend the board in a way, but not actually using anything from his hand and just basically pushing six damage for free. Yeah, and we can see that he ends up just going with the Blade Flurry next turn. So, um, you know, he ended up taking the damage and having to use the same amount of spells that he would have used the turn previously anyway. So uh, it turns out that it didn't really matter too much. Um, D2, do you think that this was, you know, part of the, the reason why he ended up losing this match? Or at this point, did it not just matter? Well, Hanson Guy had a really strong strategy, right? He basically, I mean, but, but when he took the Mage Hero Power, from that point forward, he was committed to basically clearing every single last thing from the Rogue, which is definitely possible. It runs low on minions, and, you know, Rogue wasn't able to get that burst damage in, unfortunately, for Staz there. So it was really a good strategy from Hanson Guy. I don't know if it made a difference in the end, that play from Staz, but definitely something that he'll have to look, uh, look to when he analyzes his games, because the players here are really good. They're not going to let you get away with that. He's not going to overextend on the board, speaking of Hanson Guy. Yeah, and I can imagine there's going to be quite a bit of people studying that uh, rogue deck from, from Staz because it is interesting. There's a lot of tech cards in it. So definitely a deck to look forward to as we go into the tournament. But we are going to move into our second match of the day. It is going to be UCCU taking on Dahuni. But before we do that, let's check out some highlights from that last match.